We are holding this discussion to expand our opinions that are displayed in the race exhibit. Most of the information in the race exhibit is presented by adult experts. This discussion is based on the point of view of youth experts and how we see race in society. It's important that we create the space for teens to be able to discuss how we feel about diversity issues in our own terms. This is also an opportunity to voice the specific experiences of teens in Pittsburgh because the race exhibit is local, but the information isn't. This discussion will cover the topics of racial profiling, black stereotypes, and other racial issues that we have studied for our senior projects at City Charter High School in Pittsburgh. You ever think like we're taught to stereotype to? Like, you know, you figure like your mom might say something. Or... Stereotypes come from people who are outsiders to a certain race or community, and then they go in and they kind of see how it's different from their place and they pick something that's overviewing or something that's different, and they just kind of classify every single person as having that. It's just all about the environment and where you grow up. Like, they come from family or school information or just media. A lot of media sources can be biased, and they don't really show both sides. Like some kids, they don't want to ask questions, they just watch. They're young, but they pick it up. When you see things, that's all you know. So you're self-teaching yourself, for real, like... Yeah, talk about what you know and what, yeah. what you see. Welcome to this discussion. I'm Tierra Jones and I'm 17 years old. I'm Tyler Hughes and I'm 17 years old. My name is May Knight. I'm 15. Hi, I'm Mariah. I'm 17, going into the 12th grade at City High. And I'll be going into the 10th grade. I'm going to be in the 12th grade. And I'm in the 12th grade. I am African American. Okay, and I'm African American. And I'm African American. And I'm African American. <laughs> I want to go straight to Mike Brown because after the fact, after he got killed by the cops, like, in the media, they're trying to portray him as a typical, not even typical, but the stereotypical black male. Like, they tried to say that he robbed a store. They had to, and bring, was, they yeah. had to bring up something bad they had about to yeah. find the good on why the cops yeah, shot, shot him. him. But mm. at the end of the day, it never justified, like, it's not going to justify the cop taking his life. Yeah. It don't matter what no one did in your past. If you robbed, killed anyone, that did not give the cop the right to kill him. Yeah. So for them to put that in the media and try to like make it seem like Mike Brown was a bad person, like in reality, the cop is a bad person. Mm -hmm. like, and then even with the media, they don't even display him trying to rob the store. Mm -hmm. And it just seemed like they search and dig and dig just to find something bad, but no one's perfect. Everyone did something bad in their past. But how about we dig and dig in the background of the cop? Yeah, and I'm pretty sure we can find any cop. I'm pretty sure we can find a lot of things, even when they was working in a job like that police covered up. And the media just shows that one side and you can't trust everything you see in the media. Yeah. You need to find like other parties too. A lot of people just go to one source for their news. It's hard to find like, but you figure the media constantly portrays the white side, okay, like the cop side or whatever. It always goes down on the bat. Like on the bat, where would you? There, it's really hard to find news on the truth. There's always two sides. There's two sides to, to one story. Yeah, to every story. So it's hard. It's just, hard yeah, because. Just, it's just like when like they're protesting about it and in the media they're trying to portray it as like riots and they're like trying to like, you know, yeah. fight the cops, but in reality that's how the police is making it. They're simply having a protest, but like last week someone said if it was a white group protesting it, they would just say, Oh, they're protesting and you know, they would let it go. But since it's black people protesting, it's like a big huge deal and um, just like, did y'all hear about the, um, the girl that got shot? Um, she got shot in her head. She, uh, she was a student at Harvard, and she was protesting for, um, Mike Brown. And she, um, had got shot by the police, but the police tried to say that it was a drive-by. Someone did a drive-by, but in reality, no one did a drive-by, because if the whole community is protesting for Mike Brown, why would someone come do a, a drive-by? And it's the whole community out there. Like, you know, and in reality, they shot, the cops shot her, and they're not trying to portray that in the media or say anything 
but I don't think she died. But she still doesn't justify it. Yeah, and it's but it's just that the police they try to cover everything up to make it seem like they didn't do anything wrong. Like, did you see when what was his name? I think his his last name was O'Brien or something like that. He started talking about. I, I neither can I, but his last name was O'Brien, and they had him on the phone, like the news brought him to talk about the situation, and he, you know, they kept trying to ask him, do you think it's like a racial issue, he was like, no, he felt like the black population was hopeless, and they're mad because they're hope, like they're helpless, they can't do anything about it, they can't yeah. do anything to change it, they're helpless, they're just mad in the situation that they are in, they put themselves in it. And they can't change it. They can't change what was going on, and it's their fault. It is what it is. And Mike Brown deserved what, basically what he got. It's just a white girl. Um, another thing about the Mike Brown case, it's just like um, when they're protesting, they have all this military gear and tear gas. Yeah. And, rubber pellets, I don't think that it should ever go to that extreme no. where you need military equipment to restrain people. No. Especially if they're peaceful protesting. With the with them with the police, the military and people doing all of that, that caught that builds up flame in people that want to fight back physically and violently and not just peacefully anymore. And it's like really makes them angry at the fact that they're doing that and making the situation worse. The news just portrays those people as just doing those riots and trying to be violent, and there's never shown any peace in the news. That's how I see it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but things been happening like this for for years, and oh, yeah. that's the one reason why our race don't like police. It's been happening for so long, and it's like just recently have things been getting exposed. Just recently have people been trying to change it. But this happens so often, and a lot of, like, only certain people's cases blow up, that's because they make them blow up. Yeah. Like Leon Ford. No one would have known about his stuff if he wasn't out trying to get people to know about it. If he wasn't trying to get people to hear his story. Mm-hmm. And he did it, because he, he made he's on BT, he made it on BT, he made the web page and everything, but at the end of the day, even if he... Even if you get all the people to sat with you and support you, it's still not going to change because he could still it's face he could still face like life in jail. He could still go to jail for a long time. But I think really with him, it's all about he want people to be aware, and you know, and like Jordan Miles, his case wasn't really that big. It's as big as you want to make it. Just like Trayvon, his case was was huge, but. No one ever talks about Trayvon anymore. No one eat really, like, anything. But there's one, like, Jamie Foxx. He, I, I, I think that's who it is, yeah. Like, even after it died down, Jamie Foxx was still wearing his Trayvon Martin stuff. Like, his Trayvon Martin t-shirts. And I think he was just trying to keep it going. But a lot of people forgot about it. I mean, it comes back up once something else happened. Like, with Mike Brown. Then okay. people bring it back up, but... I never think any, I don't think it's forgotten, but I think when something else big like the Mike Brown case happens, it all trickles down to going back to each case that like this happened. Like, I know it's going to be like forever and ever until somebody finally gets justice, but I think once that does happen, somebody's going to get justice and then others are going to start realizing that those people were wrong and they need to do something about it. But you figure, with Trayvon Martin, it was like the rappers and the black actors and everything. Everybody spoke out about that. And then as you know, as it keeps happening, you get more reactions. Now with this Mike Brown situation, Obama spoke out about it. And um, someone else did something on the tour. I forget who it was. Yeah. Maybe um, the God or someone did something on the tour for Mike Brown. Yeah. And so you just gotta. It's not forgotten, but. It only goes so far. Like, you know what I mean? You can only push this Trayvon Martin thing so far with society. You can, you yeah. can only push anything so far if it's, especially if it's the one with a cop mm-hmm. playing a black mom. You can only push it so far because if a police was to get convicted for killing anyone, especially a black, black person, it just shows like 
how we can trust the police if they're here to protect and serve. That's why they cover so, so much stuff, so much stuff up, but. Well, there's, there's a huge petition right now um, on, on the uh, White House website to make sure that all police wear cameras on their uniform. So not only are the police safer, so that, that way they can catch people who do things to them, but also so that civilians are safer because the police can be held accountable. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's still, it, it's, that doesn't necessarily mean that civilians are still going to be safer. Like, even if they were the cameras, like, those cameras in our cars, even if, they're super, even if they were wrong, they can still cover anything like that they want to cover up. They, they can be like, oh, the cameras broke, or they can ruin or destroy the evidence. That's what they do with everything. Like, cause where's the where's the camera from the Mike Brown situation? There's always a camera on the cop car. If they say yeah, Mike Brown reached into the cop car to grab his gun, show the video. The angles don't go that way. That the camera's right at the front, wherever where the windshield wipers are, and that's it. It doesn't go it doesn't to the sides. And it's and it's just like still like well you figure okay they they can do that stuff but I forgot what I was about to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I was, I either was reading it or I seen it on the news, like with the camera situation, that those cameras, as soon as something happens, it goes into a cloud server and it goes to news outlets and the police and it will so they can't hide the truth anymore, that's what I was saying. I see what she's saying. They could still destroy the camera and they could do all this stuff because you figure you go on Facebook and you see cops doing stuff to people all the time uh -huh. and they you never hear anything about anything and then you figure you think back to Fruitville Station that cop got out like I forget he had like he got his um his time taken off and the time he spent in jail was like put together with the time he had to he was sentenced to he he and it's just a thing that you see stereotypes portraying black people as always having a weapon. Like, in the Trayvon Martin, no, he had a gun, no, with Skittles and iced tea. With Mike Brown, it was like a bottle or something, like a drink bottle or something. With Jordan Miles, it was a Sprite bottle that he had in his pocket. Mm -hmm. And it's just unfair that they, they don't even look before they act. They just That's act. Right. And when you're so like working on four, they assumed he was someone else, and that's why. They acted the way they did. That's why they were so aggressive because they thought he was someone that he wasn't. But a cop has so many weapons. They have a taser. They have well, a cop. Right. Yeah, they have all these things. So when you pull out a gun, you're you're intending to kill. Regardless, you you can hurt somebody with anything. You do not have to pull yeah. your gun. Yeah. And what Michael? Unless they pull a gun out. It's excessive yeah. force. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. But even when they pull the gun. If they are to shoot you, they're not supposed to shoot the killer, they're supposed to shoot to wound. So the person shoots you in like your leg or your arm or anything like that. The only, the only way they can like really shoot to kill you is like you're really shooting back at them. If yeah. you're, like yeah. you're, if you're feeling yeah. threat, threatened, that's what it is for, but... And, and even that, you're, so, you're still supposed to go for non-lethal yeah. injuries. Yeah, and what, but you figure what, the Mike, Mike Brown situation, he if he was right, times, yeah, he, he, he shot him a couple times, and he, and he, he did and him and shot him still. I mean, oh, what was the hands up? Yeah, how did yeah. and you could tell by the image of him when he was on the ground, you could tell that he was on his knees and probably had his hands up because he was laying on the ground like this. Like, so he was on his knees already, and he probably had his hands up, and he still was shot him. But how does the police, but you said, like, the police has to feel threatened, or they got to shoot them, or whatever. But he was running the opposite way. Yeah. So how do you feel threatened, or how do you, how are you shooting the kill? Like, you know what I mean? How do you And then turn your back to somebody who you think is going to get you. Yeah. Why would you do that? I don't understand that, because you were, like, to me, like, it's just like, when you pull a gun, you're intending to kill. You have, cops have pepper spray, to, like all this stuff for you to, for you to stop the person or slow of training, them. Yes. To stun people, it's not anything. You, you pull the gun to, to you, yeah, you intend to kill. That's all I say because the, you for, the Fruitville Station thing, oh, I thought I was grabbing my Tay's gun. No. Yeah, you, you grab you your gun and that. you did that you to know, kill. And you, you can feel the difference, obviously. Yeah. Um, so. Like my dad's a cop 
and I've touched a taser gun and a gun before, it's like they feel like two completely different things. Yeah, you have to pull a trigger, and when it takes you, you probably have to press your left hand. Yeah, there's um, a bullet trigger too, but they're colored. Like mm -hmm. a gun is black, <laughs> and the gun is like yellow or something. Yeah. There's a distinct, and they're supposed to carry it on a certain side of their belt or whatever. And then it, it, it scares you for like, for my little brother, it scares mm -hmm. me for my family and the people that I'm around because they're stereotyping people. And my brother can be around the situation at a wrong time and they can be, he can be the first person they see and mm -hmm. just assume anything mm -hmm. with, and find out some wrong he did to justify why they did whatever they did to him. Yeah, but that's, that's for anyone. Like, even with me, like as a black female, there's, you still have that fear of cops. Like, you hate them, you hate cops. A lot of like our race really does hate cops, and at the same time we fear cops because we know what we can, like what they can do and what they can get away with. And I think that's the reason why when cops come around, you know, we always run. Our race always runs away. Not all the time. Not all sometimes the time. they're ruthless. Sometimes. That's why they act like that. Some some do, some don't. But when I'm out at events and like cops come, everyone leaves because. But then the day cops or they could do whatever, and anytime I encounter cops, I'm I'm scared because they could they could shoot me. There's countless videos of cops beating up black females, mm -hmm. like really fighting black females, and it's like at the end of the day, like they could go me you're on your where I'm going, mm -hmm. and I'm, I, I had experience. We was driving in a car, and something must have happened, and the cops pulled us over, and. We got surrounded by cops and they all had guns all on us. And they're like, you know, put your, you know, put your hands up. And if one false move, and they said they were shooting. Like, you know, it's that type of fear. Like, someone could just do one little thing and they could just kill you. And it's like, they have too much authority over other people's lives. It's not that they have too much authority. They don't have anybody to call them out on it once they've done it. Like, we can all rally around Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and we can say that that's wrong, but at the end of the day, we're not the lawmakers, we're not the judges, you know, we're not in Congress, we're not going to decide that these people need to face punishment. And that's like another important thing that we do have like outlets like that. We have social media and we do have control because the Mike Brown case would not be in the news if we didn't all... Social media. Yeah. yeah. I mean, police are just taking our authority. Today. They're just taking it too far. Yeah, a lot of them do that because they know the authority that they have, yep. like that they have, and, and they know what they can and cannot do. Or they can do basically anything they want. They ain't looking somewhere and getting away with it. They I don't think all them. cops are bad, though. I think they are. All. But like some of them are really corrupt, and for sure, yeah. And I'm trying to go to college down south next year, and I know it's kind of rough about how people, about how white cops treat black people down there oh, and yeah. uh, North Carolina and Greensboro. I mean, I don't know how bad, how bad it is, but I feel like if I'm just in the wrong place at the, the wrong, wrong time, time. Yeah. Cause I just don't want to be profiled to be like a yeah, bad person. Not. Yeah, tensions, like race relations still aren't very good down south. And that's very deep. Like obviously Missouri's not down south, it's in mm -hmm. the Midwest, but like things still cut very deep. They, they cut from the beginning when we started colonizing. I, I don't really know how my friends that affected anyone here in Pittsburgh's time. We had protests about it and we had people speaking out about it. Um, well, there was a... Um, I mean, just, I do. When it first happened, I did see a lot of stuff on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know? But, well, the other day, there was a... There was a protest in um, East Liberty on uh, Penn Avenue by the Capri and the uh, East Liberty Presbyterian Church. And Leon was there, and it was uh, like a hands up, don't shoot type of protest, how they had them um, in uh, yeah. Missouri. And I seen that on Instagram, and I seen that on the news about how they were doing that and talking, and people were giving speeches about what's going on and why this is wrong and all of that. Yeah. You don't see much action from teens in Pittsburgh because it's like, it's yeah, not about the same, it's yes. Not yeah, it's not true. And another thing is, like, majority of Pittsburgh is white. 
Yeah. A lot of gentrification here. Yeah. Yeah. People who used to be in the city aren't in the city anymore. And I just think our city is like, it's like not the same anymore. Like, it used to be kind of diverse. and I mean, it still is in different ways, but people don't care here. Like, I just feel like. They don't care anywhere. They don't, well, they don't. But just anywhere. In Pittsburgh, I see Pittsburgh as like, it's becoming like, I, my parents lived here all their lives and they said it's like kind of racist at times and the way people talk and talk to you and like I work in retail and people think they can talk to me any kind of way and I don't appreciate that. I don't, I don't agree with that. Coming from a place where I was the only black kid in my grade, you know, and I went there until eighth grade. Like, I don't agree that Pittsburgh is racist. I think that there will always be certain people who, you know, don't appreciate other races, who are racist, but I don't think it's fair to say that Pittsburgh is, especially when there's so many programs. And there is a lot of diversity. Like, if you go to the Strip, you're going to see people of different races. And the restaurants that you see in Squirrel Hill and different places are run by people from that actual ethnicity. So, I mean, I don't think it's fair to say that Pittsburgh is racist. I mean, um, well, not you don't see a lot of black people. Black owned businesses, you see a lot of um, white, Arab, like Arab and Middle Eastern people. You see a lot of their businesses, and you, even with me just running around, like a lot of foreign people are coming over to America, but they're especially coming here to Pittsburgh. A lot of there's a lot they open a lot of businesses. There's a lot of out of nowhere there's just popped up a lot of Indian restaurants. Mm -hmm. like, and yeah, because there's a big um a lot of people from Bhutan just came to America. They're refugees from Bhutan and they came over to America. They're all living in like Troy Hill and over there. Right now, you can't, but you can't blame why these people are coming. You can't blame the city for being racist. It's the people and their ambition. People from all over the world, like people live in crazy conditions in different countries, and we, as like us being from the United States, we live so good and we take it for granted. They they go over there and they work hard and they do what they need to do to come over here and make a living for themselves. But another thing about they come over here, they got it easy. They really? like because I don't agree. no, it's not that they got it easy, but they have tax breaks. If they open up a business, they got tax breaks for about five years where they don't pay taxes or anything, a business or anything. And, I think and they, they actually they're more subject to get loans than we are, especially black people living mm -hmm. here. They have it them foreigners have it easier when they come over than we do than black people do. Because they, they really don't have do. a history here and they just start coming here. They really do. And, they, and the government's like that, like, they give all these benefits and all these things to f these foreigners that come over here, but the people living here, these black poor people can't get any type of benefits at all. Well, maybe we should look at it as a colored people issue. We both have struggled. Yeah, so, I mean... They hurt the same for both of us, but they're very different in what happens. I mean, just to say someone's situation, like, someone's situation is good or it's causing more hurt or something, you know, it's just like... And like Gaza, like in all them places, like if they've been living like that for so long, a lot of them are just used to it. Like, so I mean, how can you really justify someone else? Like, and how can you give all these benefits to someone else and people in your own country and stuff? That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Racial profiling is one way these stereotypes are applied to people. Do you think racial profiling is an issue, is an issue in Pittsburgh? For who and why? Um, I just want to say I don't think it's an issue for me. I don't feel like I'm profiled. I think, yeah, sure, I walk down the street and somebody says there's a black girl. She probably does X, Y, Z. But nobody gets in my face and does anything about it. So I can't say if I when, feel that. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, I have experienced it firsthand in Macy's downtown. Like, they were following me for like, I was in the store yeah. for about an hour and a half, and they just followed me. I picked up something to go into the fitting room, and I had my book bag because I go to school downtown. And then she was standing outside of my door when I came out, like, where's that shirt you just tried on? It's like, it's right there. Could you please get away from me? And I just think that it's unfair that I feel like I was profiled that yes. I'm a thief or a thug or a criminal. Yeah. Yeah. I would probably work down a lot when I'm Well, I went, I went to West Allegheny. I went to basically an all-white school. And 
a lot of people don't see that. Like, you you do, they do, like, mentally break you down sometimes. They'll come up to you and they'll say little slick things. Oh, yeah. Like, what's up, yo? Or, hey, girl, yeah, what's or, up? Like, why would, like, you don't have if, to speak to me like that. Yeah. You don't know my background or where I came from. You don't know that I speak like that. Yeah, and it brings out the angry black girl. Like, it brings out a stereotype. Because you're stereotyping me, or you're racial. Like it's not even a stereotype. You're just having a you're feeling. Just, yeah, you're having a feeling. But to them, it's a it's a stereotype. Yeah. So you're bringing out that stereotype, and and you become angry just because you feel like you know it's coming. Mm-hmm. So I think I I think it's an issue. I think it's an issue for people who are like, for me it was an issue because I was surrounded by a lot of, of white people. There was a lot of nice white people, but. Mm-hmm you notice the ones yeah, who that. always have something negative to say to you. So, I think yeah. it, it is. Like, and it's not even just with black people, even white people. Anybody, right? Chinese, even with, anybody. Even with even the whole Caucasian race, there are stereotypes like some, some white people see others as rednecks, like trash. And mm-hmm. like, even with them, there's a line. Like, you know, some white people see them better than other white people. Like, you know, they consider them very next and they have stereotypes about them and they really don't see them as the same like you know and they treat them different as well I, yeah i've seen it it's like within every race even with even within some black people like the black people that actually make it out or start making a little bit of money they start even looking down mm-hmm. on other black people and that's how and that's another reason why some black people may feel like that when people come back some people feel like they're looking down some people don't and some people really do I think it, I think it depends like where you come from too. Like I grew up in the country where it was definitely for sure a line. I was discriminated against. Like teachers have called me the N word. Like it was for sure there. It was for sure an issue. But here in Pittsburgh, because it's so toned down and it's not as like in your face. I'm gonna call you the N word in front of the classroom. I don't feel it. I don't mm-hmm. I don't pay attention to it because it's, it's not, not as big. Yeah. And then another thing is another. You don't want to call it a race, but it really is. It's starting to become a culture for it because. There's a lot of mixed kids and mm-hmm. mixed babies being created. There's a lot of, you know, white and black couples. And, like, that's even starting to be an issue because people start to stereotype them as well. Like, and they tell you to choose one side. You yeah. gotta be this or you gotta be that. You gotta be yeah. that. And that's not the case. And it's like, really, we're starting to become their own culture. And our yeah, own because you're being discriminated there's a difference. against yeah. who you are. Your mom's yeah. white and your dad's black. That's how, yeah. Mm-hmm. When I was younger, I was I was a lot, my skin was a lot lighter. It was really pale. And so they're like, are you white or are you black? And I was like, I'm both. And then they're like, no, you have to be one or the other. Like, you know, it's all about and so how people, people come up to you and approach you. Yeah, hurt you about it. That's what you're talking about. That's mm-hmm. what it's really about because in reality, everyone has their stereotypes in the back of their mind. It's just all about how you, how you come about. and approach that person. Mm-hmm. Like you're just, are you really ready to? Are you trying to get to know the person, or you already think you know? Yeah. Well, whoever's watching wants to see this video at the exhibit. Thank you for watching it. Hope it goes viral. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>